Uh, Dirk, thanks very much. Um, congratulations to you and to uh, Professor and PK for a successful meeting. Thanks for having me. Well, um, I've been uh, watching all of this, um, this parade of devices, atherectomy, DCB, shockwave, I mean, not shockwave, uh, Supira. I mean, really, Chris? I got to prepare this vessel. It's like my prom date. It's, isn't it a little precious that I got to like wait around and, and, and atherectomize and high pressure balloon and all sorts of things? None of those devices, none of them were purpose built for calcium. And none of the devices that you saw tested and, and the data you saw showed more than 50% calcification, moderate to severe or severe calcification in their lesion sets. I'm going to show you lesion sets in a purpose built device that was meant to address calcium, 100% moderate to severe calcification. All right, here we go. So, actually, I'll go back to that. Let me just show you. I'm a, I'm a consultant to Shockwave, and we receive institutional research support. I'm also the principal investigator for the uh, Disrupt Pad 3 trial. So this is a frequent problem. The older we get, the more likely you are to have calcium. Uh, this is in women and men. And um, the, more, the, more, the older you get, the more likely it is to be found in all of your vascular beds. The prevalence of calcium is really dictated by the, 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 disease, that, the disease predictors for, uh, ath for atherosclerosis. Uh, predominantly uh, diabetes and renal failure. We have, you've seen a lot of data on calcium, but what's the problem with calcium? Calcium is something, when it's not dilatable, uh, we bang away, and Chris shows you a, ni a very nice case where you started to see some perforation, some extravasation, because he was hitting it hard. Calcium wasn't giving, but all the adjacent tissue was giving, whether it's circumferential tissue or the tissue that's uh, axially uh, dislocated, uh, relative to the calcium, it's all going to give because it's, uh, it's not calcified. And that leads to uh, perforation, extravasation, dissection, complex uh, uh, results in your intervention, and ultimately restenosis because of undilatable lesions. So I would submit to you that calcium has not been studied as, a, um, as an entity by itself. All the things you've seen here today have been retrospectively looked at in calcified lesions but not meant to treat it specifically. This is the most famous slide I've ever seen. Uh, uh, Fabrizio should be congratulated, and any young investigators here who really want to make a name for themselves should go ahead and find out what they can do to define calcium and calcium behavior in either coronary or peripheral because it is an unknown entity, or at least well, not well described. And you've seen these data sets. I'm not going to belabor it, but calcium clearly affects the outcomes both long-term and acute. And you've seen this uh, lesion set as well uh, from the impact, impact Global. And the lesion length, as it increases, probably carries with it, drags with it more calcification, worse severe calcification, as noted here, and uh, as we've noted already, many more stents implanted. So the shockwave uh, device was, is a lithotripsy type device. It was patterned after the lithotripsy for uh, renal stones. And um, basically, it's a lithoplasty in as much as the balloon delivers the shock uh, to, the, um, to the vessel wall. Um, it's actually, like atherectomy, very tissue selective. So it's, uh, it, it actually uh, pulverizes the calcium in situ without embolization, but doesn't affect soft tissue. Um, it actually is relatively easy to deliver. It's uh, well known to uh, operators who use balloons and can disrupt both superficial and deep, which I think, based on everything else we saw today, you know, I'm a big atherectomy user, but I know that atherectomy really only tackles the, the stuff I can grab. The more deep tissue calcium is not really accessible to atherectomy. And um, the bottom line is that it is, it is a frontline strategy. Any of the devices you saw today, whether it's Superior or DCB, are going to need something to really address calcium, and this is that solution. So this is actually a four-atmosphere uh, balloon inflation. This is moving. This is a film. Watch it closely. Four atmospheres with lith lithotripsy, lithoplasty being delivered. And the calcified lesion actually goes away. So it's very effective without, without macerating the adjacent tissue because the adjacent tissue is not being subjected to high barrel pressure uh, trauma. And the hope is 
that by modifying this vessel, by conditioning the vessel using the uh, lithotrip, lithoplasty, that we can actually improve tissue reabsorption. And there's some data from a rotational atherectomy in, in animals that show that there's a 50% increased uptake of drug after you rough up the vessel, and the, and the intent is that that would happen here as well. So there are actually uh, lots of clinical data already available. Uh, two European and uh, New, Ze New Zealand uh, trials disrupt PAD1 and PAD2. Uh, this was lithoplasty used as a primary uh, therapy in severely calcified lesions. Every patient who got into these trials had to have severe calcification. They weren't excluded. They were encouraged. Um, there were very low rates of vascular complications. Provisional stenting occurred 1% of the time in a, in a purposefully heavily calcified lesion set. I, I, I would think that any other uh, trial would make that, would, would never uh, have that result. Uh, very uh, good effectiveness. The acute gain was three millimeters, which is remarkable, and the low residual stenosis is a standalone device without stenting of less than 25%. Uh, the results uh, for patency at six months were reasonably sustained. So Disrupt Pad 3 is currently going on in the United States. Now, this device is actually cleared in the United States for use and sale, but Disrupt Pad 3 is meant to gather larger scale data in a randomized fashion. It also brings along with it health, health economic data. So I'm going to show you the design of Pad 3 right now. It's, a, uh, it's familiar to you in the sense that it's a Rutherford 2 to 4 classification, the relatively similar lesion lengths, 5 to 18 uh, centimeters or less than 10 centimeters of CTO. What's unusual is that all patients had to have calcium. I'll go through that in a moment. It's a one-to-one -one randomization. The randomization will be between litho lithoplasty and PTA, and both arms will get impact DCB. The objective is to assess the optimal therapy to dilate heavily calcified lesions uh, using these two ther therapeutics. Um, and you have to achieve less than a 30% residual stenosis at the end of your balloon angioplasty or lithoplasty to have been declared successful without a stent. So the inclusion criteria, and this is kind of like anybody who watches Seinfeld in New York, this is kind of the bizarro trial. Patients actually have to have calcium to get into this trial. And uh, for the exclusion criterion, if you don't have any calcium, you can't get into this trial. So that's the opposite of what you usually see in SFA and PTA trials. The endpoints are interesting. The, the primary endpoint will be procedural success. So after the first lithoplasty, or after the final lithoplasty and final balloon angioplasty, um, the, the uh, core lab will look at the residual stenosis. If it's more or less than 30%, it will be graded as successful or, or not. And then DCB will be applied. If stenting had to be used, it will be a considered a vessel failure, TLR, at day zero, and that will count against whichever device. There's also a powered secondary effectiveness endpoint, which we're all curious and interested about, which is the primary patency um, at one year defined as freedom from TLR and freedom from binary stenosis by duplex ultrasound. Uh, this is the, uh, the sites right now. Enrollment, this is actually as of April. Uh, now we actually have uh, more U.S. sites up and running. We actually randomized a patient last week at our site. Uh, things are starting to roll, and uh, you're going to see, um, I think, a, a relatively rapid enrollment. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a unique trial in the sense that acute procedural success is the primary endpoint. So, in, in um, summary, calcium has not been well studied. In fact, all the stuff that we talk about using in calcium has been retroactively fitted to it kind of by hook and crook and not by intent. The existing 12, six month uh, disrupt pad data has demonstrated safety and performance of lithoplasty as a primary therapy for calcified lesions purpose built. Disrupt Pad 3 is the largest randomized trial in any difficult to treat, specifically intended, heavily calcified patient population. And the goal is to provide level one evidence for the best treatment strategy for calcified lesions with what will likely be a leave nothing behind strategy in the vast majority of patients. Thank you very much.